And we have our first company, Mati Babu. Presenting for Mati Babu, our CTO, Josiah Kavuma, and CEO, Brian Jita. Take it away, guys. Um, thank you very much. Um, what you see, yeah, sure. What you see in the picture behind us is actually what happens when a patient goes for a malaria test in a clinic down in Kampala. One doctor attending to over 20 patients waiting in long lines uh, with their children crying before having their blood drawn to get results on their malaria status. Uh, actually, a simple malaria test takes about 30 minutes. That is from the time the blood is drawn from uh, the patient till when uh, the results are obtained. This process requires a lot of equipment. That is from the glass slides, the syringes, and uh, the chemicals, as well as a, a, a medical doctor to get conclusive results from this test. All these factors combined make it very difficult and expensive for both the clinic and the, the patient. Uh, malaria is actually a blood disease caused by a parasite transmitted to the body through a bite of a female Anopheles mosquito. And over 3.3 billion people are at risk of catching malaria. Those are the people living in the sub-Saharan Africa, people living in Asia, and the people living in South America, and perhaps all of us that travel to these locations. According to the World Health Organization report of 2015, over 400,000 deaths were recorded globally due to malaria. And 90% of these deaths were in the sub-Saharan region, and most of which were children below the ages of five. Um, all these numbers are high due to the... Uh, we, the there is no quick, rapid diagnostic test that can help curb the disease early and the people get treatment in the early moments. That's why we came up with Matibabu, a non-invasive way to diagnose for malaria. I am Jita Bryan, co-founder and CEO of Matibabu. Let's switch the overhead camera. Hello, everyone. Josiah Kavma, CTO of Matibabu. Over there is the matiscope. Very honest test for the patient. to ask the patient to set up and power the device. We then ask the patient to put their fingers into the device. The process there is, is the test going on. It takes two, up to two minutes maximum. We could switch back to the slides, then we could see the results later. <coughs> Malaria affects the, the shape, that's the physical and chemical composition of the cells. So our technology basically looks at parameters such as the shape, color, and concentration of hemozoin to detect for the disease. We have a, an African patent for the technology, and we also filed for one globally, and we're in the process of acquiring product certification in Uganda. What gives us advantage over other technologies? The fact that our technology is pain-free, we have patients being encouraged to carry on tests compared to the normal way they always do it because they always fear to be pricked. Our technology is easy to use. With just taps and no need for any skilled personnel to be right next to you, you're able to do a test on your own. Our technology is reusable. Unlike syringes that are you know, single use and you know, uh, for the matiscope, no microscopy. This one, microscope, text, scope, text, micro, that makes, that makes, micro, microscope, microscope, micro, times, five times, fast, take more micro, more micro, take hospitals, hospitals, all customized, so all customized, portable piece hardware for the use. Be free, be free from the store, from the stores, and, and the hardware. The hardware go to $80 maximum. WHO noted that one of the best ways to bring down the global deaths from malaria globally is by encouraging the development of rapid diagnostic technologies such as Matibabu, which could, you know, encourage people to test early and perhaps solve the self-medication problem. The team behind this is not just we, it's, it's more than um, we actually have other people who have 
medical expertise and who have actually developed better technologies that could do, um, for example, fetal heart rate monitoring and others, and such products already on the market. For my information, you could contact us on our website. Um, could you switch to Podium 1 for the results? Um, over there is a curve that really shows, you know, um, the intensities of light picked up from the red blood cells. And down here is um, a simple script, or what we would call a medical report for the results, which says um, negative. Thank you so much. All right, judges, who wants to start us off? Please, Norma. Um, sure. Is it on? Yes. So at $80 a device, I'm skeptical that uh, it's really viable for consumers, especially in the areas you're targeting. Can you talk a little bit more about why it would make sense for a consumer to buy an $80 device when they're maybe living on, I don't know, how many dollars a day? Uh, we basically look at the fact that our device is reusable. It's not like um, you're going to pay $80 all, all the time. and. Um, particularly for people in rural, rural areas, for example, um, the other device in the clinics you know, would go way too affordable for such people. So they can always access them from the nearby clinics and they can do diagnosis cheaply. Is that what research told you or is that what you think? That's what, that's what research told us. For example, um, a normal test down in Africa goes to about $15. So. Um, Usually, in a year, you're going to get malaria perhaps maybe three to you know, five times a year. So that's $15 times perhaps six, seven. So that's less than a year, you know. So you're up. So for $80, and you're going to use the device always and always, and not just you, but everybody else, I think it's good enough. But do you think it'll be challenging to get someone to pay that much up front? So, yeah, um, what is happening is, since it's for a household, for a household it's not a actually challenging because uh, both, let me say, the, the, the parents of the household can be able to pay over time at a subscription rate for the device. And then maybe just to add to him, we've, we've, we've done um, costing surveys before and we've found it to be the best model that's going to suit down there. Yeah. Do you have a specific country that you're going into first? Sure. sure. Uh, we have uh, done the primary tests in Uganda and that's a specific country we're going to roll out first in. And, and the follow-up is, with the countries that you're going into, starting with Uganda, how do you get it certified to show that it's accurate and that the results, I mean, if you think about the equivalent of the FDA that you'd have in the U.S. for other countries? So what actually happens is the certification goes through a process of, uh, called the National Drug Authority process. So uh, this ethical board sits and uh, asks you to do a number of tests, said 1,000 tests, and then these tests are are read and that's what is verified to allow your device to go to market. Yeah, and this process takes a, about six months. So you said that the uh, device can be shared. Um, it sounds like you're pricking your finger, so is there a risk of infection when people sort of just pass the device from one person to another? And you said that it's four to five times a year that you have to take the test? So I will answer the one of pricking of the cleaning. So before a person is sat or a patient is sat their finger into the device, they have to swab or clean up their finger mm -hmm. so that we avoid any other uh, skin contamination to other patients. And then uh, about the testing, yes, the more you test annually, the better it is for you as a patient because you know your malaria status. And what he was trying to say is a person catches malaria a minimum of two times a year. So the more if you have this device at a household level, you can be able to test as frequent as you can, you and your family throughout the year. So which is cheaper in the long run. And, and last question, um, will sort of Uganda uh, try and subsidize um, some of those machines so that people sort of see that it's, if it, it works and then start your distribution? Or you just have to go for a traditional strategy of marketing the product and then getting consumers to buy it? So we are in talks with the Ministry of Health in Uganda to try to subsidize them at the uh, health center one levels so that people can actually go for either free test at the health center or get it at a very, very cheaper price uh, for the household device. Yeah. And what are the benefits of early detection? So you said that people get this a lot. Do they not know? Do they not feel it? 
when they contract it, and how much earlier can you detect malaria than what they would do today? So one of the major benefits of early detection is you get the medication in time. So what we do is, when malaria affects you, it takes about two weeks to get to the bloodstream, and that's when it can be detected. But for a person to get the symptoms uh, into, uh, into play, it can take about two, uh, two, it can take two more weeks to do that. So, but when the plasmodium is in the bloodstream, we can detect it. That is as early as two weeks when it has moved into the blood. And how much did you say the existing test costs today if they go to a doctor? Uh, $15, 15. And so your innovation is the form factor, is the fact that you actually use a device as opposed to a blood sample. So it's the, the two minute, you know, sort of um, delay to actually get the result. Or is it sort of the ability to very quickly, you know, pick a bunch of people? What's, what's defensible here? Uh, so it, it's, it's in two ways. The, the advantage to the user is that they get their results faster as compared to the, to the, to the traditional method that takes 15 minutes. With this, you get it in two, in two minutes. But to the health centers as well, you get to diagonize more patients over time. That's creating business for the health centers as well. And maybe just, just to add, uh, for the time factor, even you know, the motivation to go to the clinics for testing, normally thinking about it, the fact that you're gonna spend over an hour waiting in the line, you prefer not to go, you know? So for this point, the fact that people know it's gonna take you know, just about two, five minutes, you're encouraged to go do the test and you could go do your other business. But it sounds like part of what you're asking is also, could somebody else build a similar test, like a competitor? Um, what, like what he said, yes, we filed for a patent to, to, to secure the technology. So a competitor maybe through licensing would, would get the technology for now, yeah. Sounds good, all right, give it up for Mati Babu. All right, so uh, our second company is going to come up to the stage. They are going to get ready. Uh, while they're doing that, I'd love to hear from the judges. What did you guys think? One thing I failed to ask was their product development status. It's unclear whether they have a working prototype, they've tested in the field, um, what kind of work they've done in country. I think, th I, think I mean... Sounds the, like they have a prototype. Yeah, that's, that, that is a working prototype. I think it takes a little longer than you can do. So they preloaded uh, a sample with that was the data they were looking at. But um, as far as I know, it's working. Well, we have a, a company in a different space uh, called NEMA, which does food allergen detection and within two minutes, which tells you whether something has you know, gluten or peanuts or whatever. And for people who have um, serious allergies, it's a great advantage to actually have the ability to do to run those tests very quietly, you know, so they know. So I think it's it's definitely sort of interesting. We this is sort of on on the med tech side of, of investing, which we don't typically sort of do. But um, clearly, the fact that you can test more people faster is a great advantage. Anyone else have uh, have thoughts about it? I, I'd probably look at it at a different market. I'm not sure the home market's going to be the the main destination for a product like this, I'd look for schools and institutions. Yeah, it wasn't totally clear what, yeah. you know, that that made the most sense for them. Same. I mean, I think it's one of these things that it's a laudable product and the mission is very clear for what they're doing, but the scale that they have to get to at that price point in these markets is enormous to be able to build a real business here. That's yeah, we, the biggest challenge. We have a portfolio company working in these markets, and what's been incredible for them are the, part, the distribution partnerships, which give them, I mean, order quantities in the hundred thousands. Right, that's what I think they're missing. Well, if you if you look at the work that the Gates Foundation has been doing in, in those countries in terms of, um, you know, trying to prevent disease, you could this is this is basically what I would do. I would try and get you know, initial grants from them to get the, 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 the wheel spinning so that you don't actually get users or consumers to pay uh, 80 bucks, even though if you're on the math, you know, number of tests, 15 bucks and so on and so forth, the math is there for family. Um, but how you get, you know, the efficiency uh, being proven is really what they need to figure out at the beginning. So what they should do is call Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, so, I mean, I know this was like a, a bit of a, a challenging one in terms of like malaria. It's not necessarily sort of the, the uh, area of expertise, but uh, I mean, I appreciate you guys. Like, try it seems like you were able to at least analyze them from like, understand them from like a business model perspective and um, think about sort of going to market. Oh, are we almost ready now? Um, that, any that, other? That's the point of a lot of 
connected hardware investments is that a lot of what Sovius has been done. So now you're going to have to go into frontier tech, which are basically at the edge of two different worlds. So how to bring those kinds of innovations to the world of medicine or transportation and so on and so forth. So it's, it sort of forces us to uh, open our eyes and our investment dollars to those sets of opportunities. So would you guys invest? It's outside of my world, so I'd say no on this one. <laughs> we're, we're not bringing it into Best Buy, at least not in the immediate Probably future. Probably not this year, no. Okay. Well, I think the number one thing you'd have to find out is if the product works or not. Yep. I mean, that's the number one piece of diligence. For us, it's outside of the geographies that we focus on. I mean, the market size is huge. We invested in our first B Corp um, late last year. So we're, we're very interested in social enterprises that, that can make a business model work. So real quick, I mean, for people who don't know, what is a B Corp? A B Corp, what is that? A uh, social benefit corporation. So basically, it's both a for-profit, but, but also mission-driven at the yep. same time. 